Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to see how to use our calculator technology, specifically TI-84 and TI-Inspire technology, to work with continuous distribution, specifically if we're given the, the PDF formula, the formula for the probability density function. Now, as it turns out, our calculators are very, uh, very, very powerful. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to use them to do several things. In this video, we're going to specifically be talking about probability calculations. Okay, now remember that probability calculations are finding areas. Okay, so now uh, please get out your calculator. If you don't have it out, just pause the video now. Go get your calculator out. Have it in front of you because you're going to want to push the buttons as we go through this. Okay, so now you have your calculator in front of you. Before we go any further, you have it in front of you, it's on, ready to go, and you're going to pause this video and enter in the things that I enter in in the video as we do them on your specific calculator because it's important that you do these things yourself. In fact, uh, in general, I will make a statement that in this course, we're going to be using our calculator technology to a great effect. We're going to use lots of the cool advanced features of the calculator to get it to basically tell us some numbers that we're going to interpret. So basically, we're going to get it to draw, do numbers and draw pictures, graphs, and things that we can use to relate to probability. So a lot of this course really comes down to figuring out what to put in our calculator and then interpreting uh, the output. Okay, so let's remember that for continuous distributions, probabilities are represented as areas between the graph, the PDF, and the x-axis. In the previous few videos, we've been looking at rectangular areas, which came from uniform distributions, and triangular distributions, which gave us areas that either were triangles or could be computed from looking at triangle areas. And those are pretty easy to do. In fact, that's why we chose those to study first, so that we could get this idea of working with area where we could work with areas that we understand, rectangles, triangles, things that are easy to compute. But how do we compute areas of more complicated shapes? Well, this turns out to be a much more um, a much harder problem, uh, at least in theory. But in practice, it turns out that we need to somehow find uh, an area. Now, we have a notation for this in mathematics. Uh, for an area calculator is what we call this integral. Okay, It's this long, skinny s, integral sign. This long, skinny s is for summing up the probability density function, probability density. So we're summing up the PDF of x. The dx over here is just telling us x is our variable, and we're summing up that probability function, that pdfx, we're summing up that probability density from x going from a to b. That will give us exactly the probability that x is between a and b. The probability that a is less than x is less than b, or probably that x is in this interval from a to b. And it doesn't really matter whether this is half closed, half open, all closed, or all open interval, the inter endpoints a and b as we've seen earlier, are irrelevant. So this is the notation we would use for it, but how do you, what does this really give us? Well, it gives us an area between the graph of the PDF curve and the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b. Well, again, if that's a rectangular or triangle, no problem. We can do that without a calculator. But if it's some nasty shape, some irregular shape, it turns out that, that uh, you know, we don't have any nice formulas for that. But the cool thing is, is the TI graphing calculators have the ability to do this approximate, uh, approximate these definite integrals. That is, they have a built-in area approximator. That's very, very cool. So we're going to learn how to use that. Okay. By the way, this notation is used in calculus and not a lot. And, and if you know calculus, you may be able to evaluate some of these integrals a different way. But that's not necessary for what we're doing in this course. It's absolutely not needed. All you need to know is that this built-in area calculator is something that we have in our calculator. Okay, so let's look at another class of examples of uh, 
of continuous distributions. We looked at uniform, we've looked at triangular. Now we're going to look at something called exponential distributions. And the formula for the PDF of x for an exponential distribution is lambda times e to the minus lambda x, where this Greek letter lambda is some specific number, like down here, lambda is 5. And that is for x greater than or equal to 0, and 0 is the, the PDF of x when x is less than 0. So you have this part that's on the x-axis to the left of 0, which can be ignored. We might as well just say this thing starts at 0 and goes to the right. Notice that when x is 0, we get negative lambda times 0 is 0. E to the 0 is 1 times lambda is lambda. So the y-intercept is lambda comma 0. So in this case, lambda is 5. So it starts at 5 and comes down. That's an exponential decay function. You should have seen those before somewhere along the line in one of your algebra classes. You should have seen some exponential functions that go like that. You know that they approach the x-axis on the far right. Now it turns out that the total area under this graph between the graph and the x-axis is 1. Now this is kind of a strange thing because this, this region that we're talking about goes on forever but the part out here gets smaller and smaller and smaller in such a way that the total area still stays 1. Okay. Now for this to be a legitimate PDF graph, the lambda must be a positive value here. But this, this Greek letter lowercase lambda just means it's some constant there. And uh, it's the same constant here in the numerator and, the, and in the uh, coefficient but with a minus and an x with it up in the numerator. And as it turns out, when you're graphing this, you can just let y1 be this top formula with the appropriate lambda in there. And you only need to just make sure you only graph it for positive x's. Okay, so that tells you that x min has to be 0. And uh, well, you know y max has to be whatever lambda is. So that, that cat, you already know what y max is. y min is 0. Or you can go a little beyond that, a little below y0, 0, 0 for y min or a little bit above lambda for y max, but not too much. So that gives you basically your, your y range. Your x range starts at 0, and a little trial and error, you can figure out what the, uh, what the upper x is. OK, so first task, get your calculator out. We're going to take this formula where the lambdas are. We're going to put 0.5, and we're going to graph it with our calculators. So go ahead and do that now. Press pause, come back when you're done, and let's finish. Okay, so on our calculator, we hit y equals. I'm going to clear out everything here. So I'm completely clear. Okay, and I'm going to put that in, 0 0.5 uh, e to the power uh, negative 0 0.5 x. So you can actually see me put that in. That's the way it looks there. We need to set our window. x is going to start at 0. Uh, let me try 25 here. y's basically we need to go from 0 up to well up to uh, 0.5. I'm going to go from just a little below in case I want to do any calculations below that. So I'm going to go to negative 0.1 to 0.5, and let's graph that. We should see it starting up here, coming down and leveling out. At some point, we can't really tell it apart from the x-axis. That is a perfectly good-looking graph. Same thing on the TI Inspire. Go to the graphing screen here. Control G gets me to my list of functions. I'm going to go up here. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. I can. I, I've got mine set up uh, this way. Let me let me go let me go down here. Let me go down here and just delete this. And I'm actually going to go do it this way. Let me show you something we could do on Inspire. I'm going to take my formula, which was uh, 0 0.5 times e to the power negative uh, 0.5x and I'm going to store that as PDF of x.
And then I'm going to actually store PDF of X. <clears throat> And I'm going to actually store that in F1 of X. So now if I change what's in PDF of X, it's still going to graph in F1. So now I can go over to my graphing menu, and there it is. Now, of course, it's extending over here. That's not good. So I, I want to... Uh, I can just ignore this part, but I, it's easier to ignore if it's off the screen. So let's look at our window, window, window settings, and again, we said 0, uh, 25. Actually, I don't think I need to go out as far as 25. Uh, probably, you know, like something like 18 is probably good enough. And uh, if I use what I did over there, negative 0.1 to point. 5, or I can go a little beyond it, maybe 0 0.6. And there's our graph. So it starts at 0.5, and it comes down, and it levels out. And that's our PDF function. Okay? So I can refer to it as PDF of X later if I want. Or I could have done it just like this one. I could have actually put this in, this formula 0.5, e to the negative 0.5 x is, is F1, and that would have been the same thing. <clears throat> okay, so there it is. Uh, it looks like the originally when I did it, I, I actually put that formula in for F1. So there's the graph. There's the older operating system, 84, new one there. There's the window on the 84. Maybe slightly different than what I just did. And there's the graph, and then there's a similar graph on the on the Inspire. Maybe a little further to the right would have been better, so you couldn't tell this apart from the x-axis. But there, there we go. That's not bad. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to find the probability that x is between 1 and 2. Okay, let's say look over here. Uh, I think these are marked out in 1s. Yes, they are. So there's 1, and there's 2. So we're looking at a region... Well, the bottom of it's nice. It looks like the bottom of a rectangle. But when you come up to the top, the top of the curve is not a straight line. It's this exponential decay curve. And so that's a weird-looking region that we want to find the area of. Hmm, and we don't really know how to do that. Okay, but as it turns out, there's a cool area calculator already built in. It's, it's actually using a technique from calculus called... Uh, Simpson's rule or something very similar to Simpson's rule at least to to do this area calculator But the part, point is we don't care. It's going to figure it out for us. And here's how you use it. Okay, got your calculators Okay for the uh, let me let me just do it and then I'll show you the screenshots there in a minute But let me let me actually just pull it up here on the on the uh, Inspire so first of all are the 84 first of all, I'm going to go to the home screen Okay, and let's do the home screen on the TI-84 here to the left. So we have our, our functions in Y1. It's already in Y1. And so here's what we, at the home screen, we can select math. And you down arrow till you get to number 9 that says function integrate. Okay, and you press number 9 or you arrow down to it and hit enter. And you get the symbols that look like it does when we write it. Well, we're going to integrate from 1 to 2, because that's where we want to find the probability between 1 and 2. What we put right here is the, the PDF formula. So that's 0 0.5 e to the power negative 0 0.5x. And this last part out here is always dx. And we get that. Now some of you may say, well, wait a minute, my calculator didn't look like that when I pushed that. Well, if you have the newer operating system, it does look exactly like that. But if you have the old system, or you can force your calculator to look like the old system by turning on the classic and turning off math print, and I, then when I push math 9 now, it comes up like this. <clears throat> now, so the first number that goes, the first entry that goes there 
is your formula 0 0.05 e to the power negative or I said I think I said 0 0.05 I meant 0 0.5 0 0.5 x close parentheses on the power comma second entry is always x that's like the dx and then you give it your left and right which are 1 and 2 and that gives us exactly the same number now I can also since I already have my formula in y1 I can save a little time by doing math 9 and I need to get y1 now if you got the older operating system you get y1 by doing variables right arrow to y variables function y1 that works on the new one as well you can put y1 of x or if you want just y1 comma x is our variable comma 1 to 2 so it's just the same thing but instead of putting the formula in here I can say get the formula from whatever's in y1 again I get the same thing okay let me put the uh, pretty print back on math print okay and that looks like that so we can get it there now on the inspire it looks the same now I've got this stored as PDF of X so again I can type this in I get the the integral thing signed from this this little thing here for my templates and it's this one that's highlighted right here and again I just type it in just like I would uh, one there uh, two there here I put in my formula I could either type this in or I can type in PDFX or I can type F1 of X they're all the same thing so I've already got the formula in so I'm just going to say PDF of X and then this is always uh, DX and there it is okay same answer so that's the probability that we get something between those two so here it is on the uh, let's see here it is uh, on the, the slide okay so remember it's math 9 and if you know it's math 9 you can just hit math and then push the 9 button you don't have to arrow down to it or arrow up, up or down to get to it or you can arrow down up to it till you find it and then do it. It's just, it'll look like function integrate. And if you have the older operating system, it'll, it'll say function integrate. Put in the formula there. Or if you've got already the formula start as y1, you can just put y1 of x or just y1 there. Comma, the second one's always x, comma. And then this is lower and this is upper that you're finding the probability between 1 and 2. And it'll calculate that area for you under the PDF curve which is a probability in this context so this is a built-in area approximator that the calculator has also known as a numerical integral on the newer TI-84 or the Inspire it looks just like you would do it by hand you put in the one here the two here you put in the uh, the function here and the DX or if you've got it stored as Y1 you can do that Okay, and this is assuming that we have this already in. Okay, so let's see. Here is the uh, here's the Inspire screen. What that might look like. Okay, now you can also do something else that's cool. Let me show you how this works. Um, let me actually pull up the actual, uh, not that. Let me pull up the actual Inspire or the uh, the, the TI eighty four. Now, we can find the same probability and have it graph it for us. So the way this works is I've got my formula in Y1, okay? And I go to calculate, which is up here, second trace. And I'm going to calculate, well, you can tell me which one. There it is, number 7. See it? So either arrow down to it and select it or just type in 7. There's the graph, and it's asking me for a lower limit. My lower limit is 1, so I just type in 1 and enter. And then it asks for an upper limit, it's 2 and enter. And look at what it did. It graphed it, shaded it, and computed a probability for us. Isn't that slick? 
so it actually graphs it. Now, if I were to go back now, watch, be careful about something. Watch out um, when you're done here. You want to be sure that you uh, clean up because if I were to do this again, for example, say wanted to find the probability between 3 and 5, for example, then I could do the same thing. Calc 7 and go lower limit 3, upper limit 5. It will shade that and, and, uh, and give me a number, but it didn't erase the old shading. Okay, so you got extra shaded here. So you want to clear those shading off. The way you clear the shading is you do second program, which is draw, and you select number one, which is clear the drawing. Okay, and that will clear off the shading, and then you can do another problem. So here are the slides, uh, the slide with those screenshots on there to, uh, that you can use for reference. Uh, the next slide also uh, basically tells you what to do. So from the type in the top version if you have the newer calculator in the bottom the older calculator for the TI-84 or the top version basically is the same thing for the Inspire. Uh, for the TI-84 Math 9 gets you to this or this either one and this will be how you find the probability that X is between A and B from the home screen. If you would like to see it shaded, it's not really necessary for you to shade it, but if you'd like to see the shading, uh, sometimes that visual helps, then enter the PDF formula in Y1, choose an appropriate graphing window, do second trace seven, second trace is calc, seven is the integral, type in the A value for left bound, the B value for the right bound, and do that. Uh, uh, it will shade it for you, so that's kind of a, a, a uh, Thing to see there. On the Inspire, um, well, you can just put it in like it looks from the home screen. Let's go ahead and do this one uh, from the Inspire. So, uh, well, I've already done it there. There's, There it is for the home screen. You can also graph it. Let's see if we can see the graphing. Uh, so there's the graphing menu. The way this works is you hit uh, Menu it's under Analyze Graph, and it's Integral, number 7. So 6 and then 7. And it asks for lower bound. You can kind of move this around, but what you want to do is type in a number. So we want to type in 1, Enter. And then it says Upper Bound, and you type in a number 2 and Enter, and it will graph it. Now, it's a little harder to clear these off, but it does come up with this. And one thing that's really cool about the Inspire is you can... You can see how that area changes as you uh, as you drag that point around. Okay, now I don't have it where I want it anymore. Now the only way I know to get rid of this, there may be another way, but is to hit that point and then delete, and then we might grab that point and hit delete as well, and so that will get it out of our way. So once again, let's go through that. That's menu, analyze graph, integral lower bound just type in one upper bound two enter there it is there's the probability and it's nice and shaded for us to get rid to clear your drawing click that point hit delete click the other point hit delete and that'll get rid of it okay uh let's see here all right, there it is there. There's the screenshots for that. All right, so let's check this out with a few examples. Okay, so let's start with one where we, then we're going to start with a couple of examples that we know how to do it by hand. And we'll do those first and then uh, by hand, and then we'll check them and illustrate them with the calculator. Okay. Okay. So looking at this, calculate by hand uh, the uniform distribution one nine. Uh, calculate by hand the probability that x is between three and seven, and then use your calculator to to shade this and calculate the probability both from the home screen and by shading it. Okay. See if you can do that. Press pause now.
Well, here is, let's do it by hand first. Okay, if uniform 1, 9, that means between 1 and 9, that's the width of 8, so the height is 1 8 everywhere between 1 and 9, 0 outside of that. So the height of the function is 1 8. By hand, we just multiply the base times the height, where well, the base is uh, from 7 to 3. That's a width of 4. 4 times 1 8 is 4 8, so 1 half or 0.5. So easy enough. If I were doing this one, I probably wouldn't even bother picking up a calculator. However, if we wanted to, we could. On the calculator, it's just integrate at the home screen. The formula for the PDF is y equals 1 8. So you could put that in as y1 right there. And then from the home screen, integrate that. This is the way it looks in the older calculator. Let me get you a screen for a newer version. So a newer version, it would look something like this. Well, it's, I could go in here, first of all, and just put this in as 1 8th. And then quit. And I want to do math 9. And I want to find the area between 3 and 7. And I could use the PDF, which I know is in Y1. Now, if you've got the newer operating system, remember you can get Y1 by going variables, Y vars, function y1 you can always do it that way whether you got the newer calculator or the older one but if you got the newer one this f4 up here alpha trace gives you a shortcut to get to it so you can just put in y1 there and then dx there and that as long as y one's the pdf this will find the probability that x is between 3 and 7 and of course that's 0.5 or in fraction one half that is exactly what we had there okay so uh, let me. All right, so we see this here. Here's the older operating system. Here's the newer one. Uh, y1 equals 1 8th is the graph. So we can find that probability just from the home screen, but we can also illustrate it visually by graphing it. Be sure that this y1 equals 1 8th is a horizontal line, but it only applies from 1 to 9. So we put that across here from 1 to 9. Uh, on the X's and these this turned out to be pretty reasonable for Y's here and we got us a nice little region there that total region of that rectangle is an area of 1 and so if we just integrate it from uh, 3 to 7 we get that shaded area which is 1 if we integrate it from 1 to 9 we should get a, an area of 1 it's okay if I shade over this so I'm just gonna leave that with that well no I should get used to clearing the drawing so go to draw clear drawing and start over. So I'm going to go ahead and calc 7. Let's go from 1 to 9. That should shade the entire region and it should give us an area of 1. Okay, that's good news. You might want to do that first just to make sure you got the formula in right. Okay, on the Inspire, here I have it worked out. Let me kind of start over again. Um, so select that point and delete it and select this point and delete it. <coughs> okay, so first of all, control G gets me to my graph. I can go in here and for F1 put in 1 8th. Uh, then I need to have an appropriate window. So I'm going to window zoom, window settings, make sure that it goes from 1 to 9. Here I used negative uh, 0.1 and 0.2 for the Y min and Y max. And that gave me this horizontal line. Again, if I were to to do this whole area it should be 1 outside of this the graph is 0 to the left and to the right of this but this is the point that's interesting okay now to shade it I go to menu uh, analyze graph integral and for lower bound I type in I want to go from 3 to 7 so I type in 3 and upper put in 7 and it will draw the graph here's my formula for the function Here's my label for the for the area, and so the area is 0.5, which means the probability that x is between 3 and 7 is 0.5 or 1 half. From, <coughs> from a home screen, I can go here, and I can say, go to my integral thing, go to here, and again, I want to go from 3 to 7, and since I have this in as f1 of x, I could type in f1 of x there. Or I could just type in the formula, which is real easy. It's just y equals 1 8th. And then 
that's one half. Okay, or of course you know that's 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 a point five as well. Okay, so there's a uh, slide now that has those screenshots for you. Okay, let's do another one. Let's try a triangular distribution this time. So let's suppose uh, x is triangular from 1 to 5 with the mode at 1 and calculate by hand the probability that x is between 3 and 4 and then we'll use the calculator uh, T84 or Inspire to calculate the probability on the home screen and then calculate and shade it, illustrate the probability on the graphing screen. Okay, try it yourself. Press pause now. Okay, so let's see if we can work this out. Well, by hand, if it's triangular 1, 5, 1, we know the base is going from 1 to 5. That's a base of 4. The height of the triangle turns out to be a half, so 1 half times the base times height is 1 half times 4 times 1 is 1, so that's the right area. The mode's all the way at the left end at 1, so the formula is a single line for the important middle piece, 0 on the outsides. And it has a negative slope, so it's going from a higher point down to a lower point. Uh, so it's actually going for uh, the point uh, 1, 1 half down to the point 5, 0. Okay, and the PDF formula, that's that has a slope of negative 1 eighth. So let's see, why, how do we figure that? Well, that's, uh, that's uh, slope is negative 1 eighth. So it's negative slope because it's going down. And it's going down a half when you go to the right 4. So negative 1 half divided by 4 is negative 1 eighth. And it goes through 5, 0. So that's negative uh, 1 eighth x minus 5 for the PDF. So that we use that to find heights. So we want to find the probability that x is between 3 and 5. So you find the, P, you find the graph at 5, uh, the, the area up to 5 minus the area up to 3. So it's a difference in two triangles. So the area for the bigger triangle going up to 5 um, is, is going from, from 1 to 5. So that is, um, no, I'm sorry, this is coming down. <coughs> So it might be useful to actually see the picture. So let me go ahead and look at the calculator. So we're looking at a shaded region like this. So we want this bigger triangle here minus the little one. So the bigger triangle goes from here to here, which is from 3 to 5, which is 2 wide. And the height here is the value of the PDF at 3. Okay, so that would be, uh, use this formula, 3 minus 5 is negative 2 times negative 1 8 is 1 4th tall and it's 2 wide so 1 half times 2 times 1 4th is an area of 1 4th that is for the bigger triangle going from here all the way to here the little triangle only goes from uh, 4 up to 5 so it's only 1 wide on the base and the height is the PDF value of 4 which you plug in this formula here 4 minus 5 is negative 1 times negative 1 8 is 1 8 tall so it's 1 half times base times height. That's 1 half times 1 times 1 eighth is 1 sixteenth. 1 fourth is uh, 4 sixteenths minus 1 sixteenth is 3 sixteenths. So the shaded area is 3 sixteenths or 0.1875. So that's how we would do it by hand. Okay, how do we do the same thing by a calculator? Well, part of it you still have to do by hand. You still have to come up with this formula. But once we came up with this formula, y equals 1 8 times x minus 5, we can graph that from, th from uh, 1 to 5. So here we go, and we could graph that from 1 to 5. Uh, I, <coughs> actually, I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> look at the next. Uh, actually, I'm going to reverse these two slides. Okay, I'll do that. Well, let's do it now. <coughs> 